Hey y'all, this battle means by Amari coming back at you with another video. Uh, people keep trying to lowball Super Saiyan 4 Goku because he was cut on the tip of his thumb by a piece of glass. And I don't think they're really understanding the context behind that whole thing. He had literally been fighting dragons all damn day. No Senzu being in between. All day fighting dragons. He didn't have the crutch of a senzu bean like he does in Super and in Z. Each dragon had its own hack's ability of destruction. Like the first one that he fought was basically poison. The whole area was poisoned and it was literally affecting Goku's ki where he couldn't even hold Super Saiyan. It was weakening him and Pan. Now the dragon himself was weak as shit. But the poison was able to make their ki so low. And their power so low that he would fodderize them. As weak as this guy was, Goku never received an antidote or anything. He was just poisoned. And he couldn't even fight dude for real. They, they, can barely, they could barely move their bodies after they were poisoned. That's how strong the minus energy was that was radiating from this dragon. And Goku and Pan were completely fodderized. They took a beating from this dude. He even fought a dragon that had the power of lightning which we know burns about 30,000 degrees Kelvin, hotter than the sun, and dude was just getting electrocuted all throughout this match. And, you know, he took a beating from that dude. Even though when he went Super Saiyan 4, he was able to tank it casually. Like, I mean, casually. But still, it still was, he was still getting hit by it. Then you had this asshole dragon who just loved to destroy shit and make earthquakes. Like, he just loved to make earthquakes. That was his thing. And take over the bodies of innocent animals to continue on, to help him do that. And Goku and Pan had to save a whole city from destruction. Like, this dude was literally destroying the city, and Goku and Pan had to save the entire city on their own. Which involved lifting people, lifting cars pushing back buildings. In fact, there was a point where Goku had to lift half the city on his own from beneath the foundation. Now, a city weighs about 352,950 tons. Half of that is 176,475 tons that he lifted. This is still Goku's greatest physical lifting feat to this date. Then Goku even had to go up against someone with the power of the sun, the heat of the sun on his body. He can raise his body temps to up to 6,000 degrees while he has the film around him. That's the temperature of the surface of the sun. Goku had to go up against this guy. And he went up against him in base for a while. And, you know, he had to come up with strategies to get around his heat abilities. And it was difficult, but Goku was eventually able to pull it off, pull off some techniques. But, you know, he was fighting a dude that's... That's, he's, he was basically fighting the surface of the sun. And not only that, the dragon also had light techniques that he can attack using light. So he was definitely a challenger, and he was fighting this dude after fighting all these other dragons. And once he took the film off of his body, he was able to, his body was basically at that temperature all the time. And Goku had to go Super Saiyan 4. He had no choice at that point. And that means Goku was basically on this heat all the time, the entire time he was fighting him, close to him. He's tanking this level of heat just constantly. He's being grabbed, blasted, all that shit by this, by 6,000 degrees. And this was no easy fight, man. Even though Goku had the edge on power, Nova definitely had the edge on speed. Then, in the middle of all that, his punk-ass twin brother shows up, who is said to have the power to freeze over the sun. He literally froze Goku still. And the only way for him to have gotten out of the ice was for Nova to bust him out with his technique. And Nova knew he could tank the, the heat and the fire and all that. So he had to set Goku on fire for a while, but it was no biggie for him because he could tank it. And... In the midst of protecting Pan, Goku had a skyscraper, the top of a skyscraper, fall right on top of him. No key shield while protecting Pan and get stomped out by this fucking ice dragon. I mean, dude really had Goku yelling when he was stomping him out like it was not a game. 
and he got frozen again because he got caught slipping. But luckily, this time he was able to bust out on his own because he can. His body memorizes the technique. Then, after Nova begged Goku to spare his brother, he gets blinded, completely slashed in the face by a technique that completely cleanly slit a, a building behind him, right in the eyes, completely blinding him. Then, before he can even recover from that. He gets into it with the strongest dragon who smacks him in the face with a city level attack in the middle of the conversation off guard. Goku wasn't damaged by that, but wow, just smacked him in the face with it out of nowhere. And right after, he just continues to completely bludgeon Goku. I mean, beat the shit out of this dude while he's blind. He can't even see. All he feels is he's just getting himself just completely fucked up <laughs> I mean golly you had to feel bad for Goku after seeing what Omega did to him just beating the hell out of this guy he took this beating like right after being blinded and smacked in the face with a city level off guard I mean Omega had like no mercy on this dude just beating him left and right then he decides to throw back a Kamehameha times 10 and smacks Goku with it. Granted, while blind, Goku's able to outfly it for a while, but still, you know, he, he can only do it for so long, and it just smacked him. Left that man just straight hanging. And, you know, after Omega absorbed all the Dragon Balls, I mean, the, the beating continued. I mean, <laughs> this dude Goku got no breaks, bro. Like, he took all this whooping all within a matter of hours in between each other. I mean, this all happened directly after Super 17, which I'm guessing Goku took a break, but it's never really said how long his break was after the 17 saga. It seemed to all have happened in the same day, within the same day. So, Goku, all this happening, and then him falling on the ground after all that punishment and everything he's been through that day, he gets cut on the tip of his finger by a piece of glass that he fell on. I mean, what do you think Saiyans are? Kryptonians in the yellow sun? I mean, if they're fucked up, they're fucked up. I mean, it's a massive drain on his body, on his stamina. Just, it's massive. And people are still going to say, well, he was still the Super Saiyan 4. Well, Goku doesn't drop Super Saiyan 4 like he does Super Saiyan Blue and all those other Super Saiyan forms. Because he's been not completely unconscious and still held it. He never dropped it once against Baby after that beating he took. I mean, the dude takes beatings in Super Saiyan 4 and can still hold the form. It can sustain a massive stamina drop. He can hold the form so naturally. He was, I mean, he was able to teleport the entire planet to another planet back and forth with instant transmission while in Super Saiyan 4. It doesn't... It doesn't drain stamina it's un he can hold the form like it's his base it's, it's so natural for him so it being able to get cut by glass shows just how much control he has of the form and how long he can hold it through taking such a beating and such a massive stamina drop goku going up against all those dragons was the ultimate test of his power and ability so yeah it's still going to be fanboys and haters that say well it's still cut by glass and that's all they're gonna say because that's all they got. I think they need to be more concerned about why their boy Goku and Super got scarred by a bullet when he was perfectly healthy. That's something that they need to be concerned about, to be honest. So yeah, go ahead and leave a comment, tell me what you think about the situation, and I'll see you on the next video.